Welp, the battle for the best gaming CPU is on. April is a big month for gaming CPUs with the release of both the new flagship Intel 12900KS and AMD's Ryzen 7 5800X 3D. Before both of these larger companies release their next generation of brand new CPUs which are just on the horizon. Intel just put the 12900KS in a league of its own, but at a cost. Let's see what that means and how the 5800X 3D could still very much be a good thing. So let me just begin this review just like I did when I did the review of the RTX 3090 Ti. If your budget is $500 to $1000, this CPU is not for you. I, I know, I know, put your bat down. You are going to hurt someone. Okay, so let's first talk about what exactly the 12900KS is versus the 12900K. So it has all the same awesomeness that sits in the current gaming CPU, the 12900K. It's got 16 cores with Intel's new performance core and efficiency core architecture with 8P cores and 8E cores. It's got 24 threads, which is not good for sheet thread count, but it's good for CPU thread count. It's got that 30 megabits of L3 cache, but unlike the 12900K, which caps out at 5.2 gigahertz on the gaming center P cores, the 12900KS can boost to 5.5 gigahertz on not just one, but two cores simultaneously. With great boost comes great power though, as we've also seen that that power jump from 125 watts on the K to 150 watts on the KS. I mean, on paper, it looks impressive. And with the 12900KS releasing on April 5th, Intel is wanting to put a stake in the ground when you think about the fact that the $449 Ryzen 7 5800X 3D is just a few weeks away at $290 less and boasting 1080p performance at or above the 12900K. So when I thought about doing this review, I wanted to really think about how I can frame this in the best possible way for you, my intrepid audience. It sounds so cool when I say that, intrepid, right? You're so regal. Who is the 12900KS for and why? What are the build considerations when I'm building with a 12900KS in my system? Where do I see the whole 5800X 3D fitting in? And four, show me your work, Roby. Prove to me that you actually did something. Well, 45 graphs later and you will be very impressed. Now, these are good questions, right? Yeah? But let's do some quick caveats real quick. First, I want this to be entertaining. I mean, you're taking your time with me here and you wanna have that flash and pizzazz and I really wanna value your time. I've already probably wasted it just with flash and pizzazz comments. So stay tuned for lots of little bits our editors are gonna have fun with while I'm talking to you and taking you on this journey. Secondly, this isn't gonna be your in-depth breakdown. We are about normal folk who just want the no-nonsense, easy-to-understand breakdown on the CPU. We aren't trying to be your, like, PhD in PC building or electrical engineering. If you want to know the precise wattage that the CPU pulls as the sun hits its zenith during a full eclipse, then check out Gamers Nexus or Hardware Unbox. They got you covered. And I heard they give out certificates of completion just for getting to the end of the video and scoring an A on their post-video quiz. It's a toughie. Now, by the way, when we say show your work, Roby, it's a section in and of itself. At the end of this video is all the data and charts for your viewing pleasure. So if you just wanna nerd out on that sort of thing, you totally can. Check out the links in the description or just head on over by using the table of contents thing that's at the bottom and just jump ahead. By the way, if you're enjoying this type of review and these are like your forte, the whole thing where we give you relevant information while also keeping you entertained with my song and dance, then don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. Also, stay tuned at the end on how you might win a little cash and at the same time help us with feedback and improving the channel. So who is the 12900KS for? Well, if I'm frank with myself, and I'm not, my name's Justin, it's not for everyone. I mean, I think it's like the people who are buying the 3090 Ti. These are folks who want the best of the best and the budgets are in the north of $3,000 range at a start with one big difference. This is not a great CPU for 4K gaming. Wait, what? 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 A CPU is not a big thing when it comes to 4K gaming. Don't get me wrong, it's important, but nowhere near as important as it is at 1440p and especially at 1080p. Now it's time for our first chart and my favorite way to demonstrate this, with games. In this case, let's look at Cyberpunk 2077. Now for this test, we set things up optimally to give the Intel 12900KS all of the bells and whistles it needs to really like stretch its legs, like a, like a really good racehorse. So we got Windows 11, a 3090 Ti, and DDR5, which you will see here actually does make a difference in gaming. Oh, 
and DDR4 just to prove our point. Well, at 1440p, you can see our average FPS was 136.24 versus with DDR4, which is 128.95. These are both pretty dang solid numbers. But if we go more CPU dependent and rely less on the GPU and even more on the CPU and drop down to 1080p, you see 130.15 frames per second with DDR5 and a jump up to 144.46, or 10% just by moving from DDR4 to DDR5. Now, when you look at 4K, you actually see where the game is essentially almost completely GPU dependent at this juncture. And even between the K, KS, both with DDR4 and DDR5, those numbers are nearly identical. So what's the whole point of this little journey, Roby? What are, what are we doing here? Other than showing you super attractive gameplay and nifty animated charts. I mean, they are super cool, right? But the point was that as a gamer, the 12900KS isn't a great 4K or 8K gaming CPU because it's almost irrelevant at this point. Irrelevant? Like how irrelevant? Like irrelevant like how important your parents are for approving the people you date. Sure, they share your opinion, but do you really listen to them? I mean, do you? Really? When you go look at the other reviews on the CPU for gaming, you will see folks showing only 1440p or 1080p numbers because above that, the CPU doesn't really play a heavy role in performance at 4K. Also, and I know this review isn't about this, but I will say that if you're spurging on a KS and you're playing at 1080p or 1440p, you are actually going to get some benefit from going to DDR5 RAM. The more the CPU is doing, the more you're going to benefit from the upgrade. In Borderlands 3, we saw a seven frame jump from 320 to 327 FPS at 1080p and a nine frame jump at 1440p. At Tomb Raider, we saw frame jumps from the KS on DDR4 versus DDR5. Same thing with F1 2020 at 1080p, and even the CPU turn times on Civilization VI, we saw measurable improvements in the seconds of time saved. And of course, the most significant being in Cyberpunk 2077, which shows a very good jump in performance, especially at 1080p. Now, is it worth it? Well, if you are more than likely asking yourself that, then the answer is probably no. However, if you're one of the people considering building like that powerhouse system, like that $7,500 beast ultimate gaming system we built right here, that was very close to the same price as like a good used car, then yeah, if you wanna ink out all the power via the hardware, this is another way to boost your performance every so slightly, and this may make some sense to you. Best is all relative to you, the buyer in this case. For the majority of us, that value set isn't there because you know we need to do stuff like eat and like pay for everyday living things like sponges and toilet paper. Unlike that person who has like a bidet and feeds their cat Fancy Feast and is literally shoving 12900 KSs into their kid's Hot Wheel PC so they can play Roblox at like a bajillion frames per second at the age of seven. <laughs> Look at my frames, daddy. Aren't you proud? Come see me. Okay, Roby. So looking at all the gaming benchmarks across all those games, the 12900 KS is the fastest gaming CPU and even faster with DDR5 if I want to build the best high-end rig for 1440p gaming, then this is the CPU for me. Okay, Ruby, so, so I'm in, I'm, I'm bought in, but I wanna build an Uber PC with all the RGB that I can like see from the moon, and I also want it to like sync to my Enya and Sade in my sleep to reduce my time to REM sleep by like 0.6 seconds. What should I know about building this PC? Well, first off, wow, that is very specific, and second, Cooling and power are your going to be your biggest concerns. Now, when I say cooling, I do mean cooling. Remember that beast of the PC I was telling you about that you can purchase a used car with or like 68 of your closest friends, this levitating speaker aircraft model? Yeah, that one. See, that has an H150 Elite LCD cooler with three ML120 Elite RGB fans and three Noctua AF12 airflow fans in push-pull configuration, which means you have fans on the top and fans on the bottom, both pushing and pulling the air through, with an extreme fan curve and under load, we were keeping our 12900KS at 88 degrees, which is totally good and has some headroom for more, and even if we wanted to make the fans quieter, but the point is, you're going to need to pay attention to how you're cooling the CPU because it does run warm. Now, Intel did share with us that they are seeing motherboards pumping a lot more juice than they need through the CPU, and you can change some BIOS settings to improve temperature like ICC Max and the load line. But let's be honest, if you think BIOS is actually the name of a fancy German knife brand, and then I throw in like ICC Max and load line into the mix, I might as well be speaking to you the same way they speak in Close Encounters of the Third Kind. Bum, 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 bum. Yeah, it totally makes sense, right? Yeah, no, you totally get it after I did that. Yeah, 
Exactly, you have no idea what I'm talking about. Just make sure you get a great cooler, an awesome airflow case, and set it up for success like the Corsair 5000D that you have the room to ensure that the CPU is properly cooled. Now on to the second thing, power. Now, do you remember those recommendations that people have been spewing for forever? Like the 3060 Ti, 650 watts, 3070, 750 watts, 3080, 850 watts. Forget all that when you're using a KS. You are definitely gonna wanna be stepping it up here with the jump in power is going to be important. And skipping here could cause a lot of instability problems that may manifest themselves in really weird ways. Look, unless you just wanna bully your PSU like Biff from Back to the Future, go ahead. But instead of getting you covered in like manure, what it's gonna do instead is go ahead and fry your entire system and never talk to you again because it's broken, or it's just gonna drop little gremlins all throughout your system and it's gonna manifest themselves in like blue screen. It's like the worst. So make sure you spend the money and get enough power. I mean, we're using 1200 watts in our systems. Roby is recommending no less than a 3070 Ti slash 6700 XT with this car. It starts to get weird from a spending standpoint if you're going lower. And of course, this is just for gaming. I can definitely see in a workstation setup where this rule doesn't necessarily hold true. Okay, so I know it's powerful. And with that power, I now know how to build a system that is responsible and robust enough to handle it. But what if I just don't wanna spend that kind of money, but still want awesome performance? Well, that's where I think the 5800X 3D may be the answer. See, AMD is claiming 12900K or better gaming performance at $449, which as a reminder, the 12900K is just slightly underneath 600 right now. So that means that people who wanna build more reasonable systems and still get crazy good gaming performance probably really can. Will the 5800X 3D be more powerful than the brand new Intel 12900KS? Probably not. But again, will it be a better option for you if you're cost conscious? More than likely. In the end, I really do think that we all win because unlike the GPU war, which has been very considerably one-sided, the CPU battle has been trading blows like Xbox and PlayStation fanboys. But unlike that war that is filled with like piss and bile, this one is filled with cheaper CPU prices and better value for all of us. Do I think AMD would have made the 5800X 3D if 12th gen wasn't as good as it is right now? Maybe, but more than likely, no. Do I think Intel would have dropped prices of the CPU so soon after launch to bring them competitive with Team Red counterparts? Probably not. And finally, do I think we would get a KS if there wasn't some concern over what 7000 series may bring? I also think that's a no. I mean, if 11th gen and its lack of KS is any indication of how much more competitive Intel thinks AMD is, then I am crazy excited. And honestly, we should all be very excited about what they're about to bring to bear with 7000 series and Intel with Raptor Lake. We get some super exciting news just on the horizon as we start to end 2022. Here is my, I skipped to this part because I didn't want to see all the super entertaining things my editors put into this video, and I just want to know what the meat of what you were going to say is, Roby. You make me sad, but I'm going to tell you anyway. I think the 12900KS is the most powerful gaming CPU and will remain so until we see 7000 series in Raptor Lake. I think for a very specific audience who wants the highest performing 1440p gaming or esports players who need the highest performing 1080p gaming experience, this is a great CPU choice when paired with an equally awesome GPU from either Team Red or Team Green. I think it's going to be great to see what the overclocking community is able to do with this, and it has some real potential to make some awesome custom loop 3090 Ti, 3090, and 3080 Ti gaming rigs that will keep these power hungry and blisteringly warm components cool while they also show mind-crushingly fast frames per second on your favorite high refresh rate monitor. I think for the cost-conscious or budget-minded individuals, this is another, wow, cool, Bugatti made another supercar that does like zero to 60 and rewinds time for more money than you can make in 10 lifetimes, or hey, now you can get a super yacht that you can travel to space and is sentient. It's all well and good, but you're never gonna get one of them, and hey, it's good to know I guess it's out there for all of us. And this includes everybody. This is just showing where performance is going and every time they waste silicon, as all the kiddies like to say, we jump in performance and that will make its way down to more budget-friendly builds and still blow our minds like modern day CPU and GPUs do today. 
I mean, everybody remembers when 3000 series came out. Wait, what? So if you're one of those folks who wants the best of the best and is playing at 1440p, then hit that buy button and you won't be disappointed. And there's a lot of fun to have with the 12900KS. But if you aren't Richie Rich, then know that there's some cool stuff on the horizon that may be even sooner than we think with the 5800X 3D later this month. Also, if you wanna see all the data and over 45 graphs with all the work, wait until the end of the video and we will play them all over some like super cool tune of some sort. What song? Well, it's gonna be a surprise. But it's not about what I think, it's about what you think. Like, what did you think of this video? Tell us and maybe win a little cash in the process. First and foremost, you need to leave a quality comment down below along with liking and subscribing to the channel. You also need to ensure that you have a way for us to reach you via your YouTube profile. So make sure your email's in there. Now when I say quality comment, it doesn't need to be positive. It just needs to be something you liked or didn't like about the video. What surprised you? Did you like this review format? Was there something else you would like to see? Just not, I deserve to win. Can you send me this free 3090 Ti or something similarly lame? We will be giving away $25 to one lucky comment below that is worldwide as long as you can accept PayPal or Venmo. So here's the questions. Did you like the video? Did you like this format of review? What did you think of the 12900KS and are you gonna be getting one? Do you think the price of $739 is too much or right on, right on target? I'd love to know all of that down in the comments below. Now, while you're down there, make sure you slap that subscribe button, whip that like button and ring that notification bell so you get a notification each and every time we post a video right here on Robitech. Do you know we have a live stream channel for special builds and events? Check out Robitech Live down in the description below so you can like and subscribe to know when we go live and actually do live stream builds. Have questions about the CPU or other tech related questions? Then check out our amazing Discord server filled with other tech and PC enthusiasts that love to share their thoughts and ideas on these very subjects. Looking for cheap tech? Then check out at robytechdeals.com or at robytechdeals on Twitter where you have our guy Tom scouring the internet for the best deals on all things tech for PC, components, gaming, you name it. Finally, you can also follow me and my amazing team at Robytech everywhere. We hope you enjoyed this video and we look forward to seeing you on the next one.